hey my lovelies welcome back to my channel it's your girl mel and we are here with mommy as usual so you already know it's another story time but today mommy is a little bit under the weather um she's not feeling well i was under the weather too but i'm feeling much better than she is and um yeah so today you know just bear with her yes, she's, please do. <laughs> she's she's still you know doing all of this for you guys even though she's not feeling too well so yeah um yeah but promises are promises so we, we stick to our promises <laughs> we try at least um so yeah go ahead all me. right disclaimer the stories that i'm going to tell in this series are my experience my truth and my point of view over the past 38 years that I have been in Jamaica. And it's in no way intended to slander any person, the culture of Jamaica, or the island as a whole. And so uh, last time I think we stopped uh, with um, the houseboat and that we decided to get that houseboat from Florida to come over um i got some pictures i don't have much right now melody will show you the uh, blending some pictures yeah, but basically um again my mommy chipped in as usual because of course i did not have that kind of money and then it turned out that we would have that the people in florida would have to tow the board from the keys no name key to miami and then in Miami, it would be loaded on a big freighter that would come to Kingston. And then in Kingston, it would be unloaded. And then we would have to see how we get it over. So, luckily, a good friend of ours uh, had his boat anchored. A, a, a big sailboat, a big steel sailboat, 50-something feet, in the harbor. And we asked him if he would be willing to take the trip to Kingston and and uh, tow the houseboat over, because of course it was it it was able to swim, but it did not have any engines or anything. It was not really navigable without being towed. So uh, when everything was agreed and 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 organized, that's what we did. Fine, the boat was set. In Miami, we were always kept abreast. It's like, oh, we reach here now, and we reach here now, and yes, we are in Miami now, and it is getting loaded. And I said, all right, fine. And then we heard in from Kingston, is yeah, your houseboat reach, which they made one big mistake though, in Kingston, they did not unload it and set it right back in the water where it belonged. They put it on land first. And that was not a good decision because this boat was definitely not made to sit anywhere on land. And actually what happened, it kind of shifted a bit in itself, which later on would cause some problem. But anyhow, uh, our friend went with the sailboat, he got all the papers together. But, oh, and then, haha, -ha, you know, everything you bring into Jamaica is uh, due for customs fees. Now at that point in time in Jamaica, they did not have the rigid regulations like today. So basically what they would do is whatever come in, they would look at it and appraise it and say, all right, it is what it is worth and we take so, and so much percent of it as customs fee. As it turned out, my houseboat was a problem because it was neither a house nor <laughs> a boat <laughs> so they had no idea what to do with it because basically the the, the up part was uh, partly furnished and then it couldn't swim by itself it wasn't it didn't have any sails any motor no nothing and and then basically what we called kingston said ah when will you be ready for us and and they honestly told us we have no idea because we don't know how to charge this so basically I just said, well, all you do is a used houseboat 
and uh, just come on give us a play you know and and actually what they did they did not charge much I don't remember how much it was after all these years I only remember it was very reasonable so I was happy of course mm -hmm. and then our friend went over with his sailboat took him two days to reach because of course you have to sail right around the front part like St. Thomas Moran Bay these places to go around to Kingston and that would be the same way he would come back he had all the papers with him he had the money with him I, I didn't even have to do nothing I was just sitting in Port Antonio waiting for my new house to come and then uh, it took him another three days basically to get through with everything and get the houseboat back in the water put it behind his ship and he would motor back of course because I mean you couldn't sail <laughs> with that weight behind you so he, he would get enough gas to motor back to Port Antonio and then of course we both had radios and then after two days I hear somebody calling I'm Andres Marino, Andres Marino I'm coming in, I'm coming in and I was like yes it's coming <laughs> so we were standing up right by our dock and watching and then while uh, we were standing there we realized that more and more people would come around the market side and around the other coast there and everybody was like standing up and with eyes big like that I said what the hell is coming in there because I mean it was kind of big the boat so so uh, both of them together so he towed it in slowly and then we uh, he took it off and we he kind of basically pushed it to our dock mm -hmm and tied it up so we finally had our home at home and it was really it was really amazing because up to the end we had this boat i mean it was the very only lived in houseboat in the entire jamaica i found out later on that there was another houseboat actually i went there in montego bay but it was a restaurant it mm. was not uh, a house in the sense so we we finally towed it to the right place where we wanted it to be docked which was on the side here the marina oh, I can show you maybe this was a marina so it was docked on this side here let me bring it close so it was docked on this side so we had to walk around the front in order to reach the restaurant but we had a little privacy on the side of course we had our uh, electricity plug-in right there we could bring our water hose there to get water on the boat so we after no time we were basically set i had a new house in the houseboat we had one master bedroom with a bed in it already with wardrobes in it with a little desk two bathrooms fully furnished of course one bathtub one shower two toilets then we had uh, two more cabins with double bed for the children so they ha uh, had their own quarters then we had the little galley coming out and then the living room and out in the front we had a little veranda and in the back behind the master bedroom was a very very small veranda but it was nice because I could just open the door from my bed practically open the door and be right on the sea <laughs> <laughs> I loved it up to this day I love it I mean I, I, I think it's a very nice lifestyle to live on the water <clears throat> so we settled nicely and brought down all the stuff from Bliss that we had basically up there we only had clothes anyhow and a few personal belongings that were left after the hunches sank so we brought down what we had and set it nicely on the boat which um, the owner of Bliss was actually not to oppose us uh, of us leaving because he was in the process of selling Bliss mm -hmm. so of course I mean it was all the better for us that again you know fate timing yeah. everything worked out perfectly you know he got back his house for the new owners to, to take over and we had a home again as well which I mean living at the place where you work which we did before with the hunches but I mean it was like it is on one side it's very positive because 
you are right there you can supervise everything you are, you you can see what's going on practically day and night on the other side it can be negative because you're there <laughs> you know you are all the time there you are reachable all the time so i mean it's especially in the sailing business uh, a lot of sailors come in in the middle of the night but of course they wouldn't really disturb people but you realize somebody is coming so of course you get up and have a look and welcome them so basically being back in the marina to live um, was kind of straining at, uh, in, in some ways but I mean it was wonderful as well so I, I liked it on one side on the other side I said oh, sometimes I wish I was somewhere else <laughs> I don't want to be reached yeah. but I mean it was more positive than negative more, most definitely so, uh, as we went on living there, uh, we had some incidents happening there. And um, I want to show you again. I, I know you saw it, but can you, I hope you can see. This is the one part of the marina. And as you can see, it was constructed from wood and thatch roof. And here in the back part, we had bamboo right so it's highly flammable highly flammable actually the former owner had an insurance for the place which at that time was already i mean outrageously high and uh, because of the dangers of it to burn down and then um, that insurance ran out a while after i took over and i couldn't afford to pay those prices to be honest so the building was not even assured insured one day we were sleeping already basically when we hear heard this loud loud crackle and <laughs> and then is and, and suddenly the the whole place lit up and we were like what the hell and and went up uh, i got up at least and 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 looked out and saw on the other side of on hold on where are we on this side there it was the market wall and behind that wall there was an old ship that was anchored there for quite a while which i have no idea what was happening why the people uh, never took care of it or took it out of the water or sold it or whatever it had been there for a while that ship was burning when I say burning, it was flames all over the place and, and I mean that thing was <sighs> it was it was awful to see. My first concern concern was oh my god when if if um doesn't funken uh if the fire start to come over to my side to my thatch roof, you know? <laughs> That would would have been complete. The spark. The sparks. If the sparks, even sparks, would be enough. Sorry, my brain is slow today. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, if the sparks would come over now and reach my thatch roof, my thatch roof would be burning like <laughs> nothing, like like much stick or whatever. So I got kind of like a bit panicky, and then I said, No, 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 hold on. We have a water hose. Come, come, come. We have bring the hose with put on the hose and we started to spray off our roof like wet it up, wet it up, wet it up everywhere possible I mean we were standing there for easily two hours and having wet up the roof constantly so did you just wet up the one side or? no, the other, I mean the one side more but in between we tried to get everything wet okay. I mean we didn't know how far the sparks would fly It was, the wood was not far from us you know was maybe 30 yards from us so that is not very far and and wind come gusts of wind and mm -hmm. it will blow it over so I I mean I was nervous the whole time so after it seemed like an eternity but Antonio fire brigade finally arrived which I have to say the the, the, the main station is three roads further up from where we were like, I mean you could literally. walk there faster than what they came <laughs> and then they, they start to set up and 
no water in the car that they could pump but they, out. They do that Not now. a drop of water. They hmm? still do that to this day. Sometimes. They do that to this day. I mean, right. they go to a place to 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 get out of fire, and they have no water. And then yesterday, leave out back figure get water, yeah. and then I'm and like, that's what? what they did too. Now, first of all, we have salt water. I mean, right underneath us. So I was wondering if they couldn't have used some kind of pumping system and even pump it straight on on the board from the sea. Although I don't know if salt has any influence on it. But no, what they did, like what this mel Melody said, they took off to fill the tank with water. Like, we're gonna look how bad it is first. Yeah. And Do then, we really need yeah, any water? Right. You know, and it's then, like, like okay. is it burned down already? Because if it's burned down to the ground already, we're not about to need for the well, water. Well, basically, basically <laughs> that's what happened anyhow. Because by the time they filled the tank and came back, that board was gone. And I could stop finally to, to spray my roof because I mean the, it was very very hot around it still but it were there no more sparks. And so, was like, so was was there like what was under the, the roof? Was there like some form of zinc wood. or something or no, just no, wood? No, just touch and wood. And the our roof? Yeah. Yeah, just touch and wood. I, if that ever caught fire that whole thing would burn down. So when you wet up the, the roof, did any water <coughs> drip through? No, because it, it, the the way the the no we 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 spray it underneath as well. Oh, so the whole oh, marina oh, yeah. was basically. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the whole marina was so. <laughs> no, we had to spray underneath because of course the sparks could have flown from that side underneath and still uh, uh, put it on fire. So basically, yeah, everybody, we were soaked, the marina was soaked, <laughs> okay. the roof was soaked. <laughs> So, but uh, luckily nothing else had happened. So I was so grateful for that. I, I didn't even say anything to nobody. I just said, thank, thank you universe. You saved my marina, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was one story. Um, like I said, for the Antonio Fire Brigade, I hope they start to do better now. But as Melody said, we have heard recently the same thing happen. Um, Another day, we had our regular customers coming, of course, right? And and some of them uh, were really heavy drinkers, of course. But at this particular day, it's like three of, of our customers came in, not even at the same time. I don't even think they, they had any appointment to meet or anything. They just came in. In the morning, like by about 11 o'clock, one came first, second one, and so on, met and, and said, hi, and oh, let's drink something. So they started to drink Heineken. And in no time, these three guys had one case of Heineken depleted. I mean, one case is 24 bottles, right? And we are talking maybe in the matter of two to three hours so by two o'clock in the afternoon they were well happy <laughs> and then they wanted more so I got another case of Heineken and that is even when one of them when we opened the, the, the first round he looked in the bottle and said no I don't want this one take it back and we were like okay gave him another one put that aside for now and then he continued like that. Every time they ordered the next Heineken, which happened frequently, he looked at it. Nope, I don't want this one. Give me another one. So after he did that three, four times, we gave him back the first one that he refused <laughs> and he took it. So <laughs> I said, all right. <laughs> Found the trick how to get all of this. <laughs> so, so he went on and on. And then it was dark already. Well, in, in Jamaica, I get dark pretty early, but I think it was about 7 or 8 o'clock or something. And suddenly there was, of course, with their alcohol-laden heads, a uh, quarrel erupting. Don't ask me what happened and why. It probably was over nothing. And they got more and more aggressive and shouting and decent. And luckily, I didn't have no other guests at that time. And then... Um, we tried, we, uh, my staff, uh, Drew was there, I was there, I don't even know who else was there. 
we tried to calm them down of course because we didn't want anything heavy to happen mm -hmm. of course so suddenly one of them decided he would turn against us now because we were trying to calm them down and he started to curse on oh, i'm going to bundle in this babylon oh, no, no. and him take out him him lighter and held I can tell you this is the bar part here all right let it focus first this is the bar part and he was standing right there and he held the lighter under the thatch roof now at that point in time i wasn't too too concerned because we did have rain that day <laughs> so <laughs> the, the roof was uh, not really Damn. in danger at all but he was quite and everybody was like no man stop it and he was no man boondown babylon because he was a rasta or at least he had dreadlocks let's say it that way he was so <clears throat> going on and on and on when suddenly one shot was fired boom and everybody was like what the hell and there was a small sailboat that was right now there's our houseboat was here the dock in between and there was a small sailboat docked right here there was a restaurant right so <coughs> the owner of that small sailboat heard the whole com commotion came out of his boat gun pointed towards this guy who tried to burn down the place and said stop that now you are not going to burn down my home because for him it was home at that point in time <coughs> or i shoot you and i mean he looked so serious <laughs> that nobody really doubted him at all so we were like oh all right and but luckily the, the arsonist <laughs> uh, stopped what he was doing because he was kind of shocked to it even went into his uh, alcohol Heineken laden brain that uh, maybe he should stop now <laughs> so that is how that guy brought peace and quiet to the place again because after that everybody kind of mm -hmm -hmm and left you know? mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but it could have been really really dangerous Although the roof was wet, but I mean, just uh, three people getting completely out of order that alone is enough. Although at the time we had security working for us and, and stuff, but even those, I mean, how you really want to stop drunk people? <laughs> <coughs> drunk people now have no sense. <laughs> nope, definitely not. Uh, so, what happened? You, what you, what the pictures I showed you here were the original marina so what happened though with this part it's it had been there for i don't know how many years from before and even the the planks on the where we used to walk everything started to rotten badly mm -hmm. i mean there were some places where you could uh, break through with your foot if you if you would go on it too heavy the bamboo was starting to rotten to uh the thatch Although we kind of gave it a new layer every year, but it wasn't all that anymore neither. So we decided to get a loan, pull down the old marina and rebuild it from scratch basically. Pull down the whole thing? The whole thing, everything. Only the, the, the cement part that you see underneath here, the B, the the B yeah. Those would stay, but they needed to be strengthened as well because the top part uh, started to crumble as well. That was uh, the main reason why we said we have to do something so now. Yeah, they started to crumble, and <clears throat> we couldn't even no uh, uh, um, tie no board to it any longer because it would probably uh, break out. So mm -hmm. we said, uh, uh now it's time. So we decided to take a loan. Pull down the entire place and rebuild it, which was one huge thing to do. Project, <laughs> definitely. And how that went and uh, what was happening then, that would be the next story. And sorry if this one is a bit shorter, but 
I'm not feeling so well. <laughs> yeah. So guys, um, that was, you know, how we got the 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 um the houseboat and stuff. And oh, you can you can just tell them one more thing about how the the. Oh, the this was the galley. Well, this is the one photo we found. Maybe Melody have to hold it. That was the galley that I was speaking about and on this side of the galley there was a living area, living room area and this whole boat was built underneath uh, had compartments so basically the plan for the compartments was if it would uh, spring a leak somewhere in, in, in any of the compartments the rest would not be affected only that one compartment mm -hmm. <coughs> I'll blend in the picture on the screen again as well, but I'm just seeing here that there's some writing on the back of this picture. Those were the former owners, yeah. So they sent you this picture? They with... sent me all kind of pictures and then they wrote what was on it and what would stay and actually we, we found even one or two chairs on there still when it came to frying pans which I still use up to this day <laughs> because they were really good cast iron. <laughs> So they wrote kitchen <coughs> with single sink, stove, refrigerator, four drawers, two lower cabinets, four upper cabinets, two fluorescent counter lights, three overhead recess lights, one overhead fluorescent light. Yeah, so even the lights they wrote on everything because I couldn't go there and, and uh, look at it myself. So basically yeah. they would give me the description of everything so i'll blend in the picture again on the screen so you can see it a little bit better and otherwise from this picture sadly we don't have any pictures of the inside of the house Do we have but from the former owners too inside you have a different one from than the this? bedroom oh well i'll show we'll you have the, to find it <laughs> i'll show you the bedroom as well if <coughs> can't find it but there is not much pictures of how it was when we had it no because you see at that time nobody had really I didn't have even a camera much less and you take things for granted so you don't take pictures as much nowadays of course it's a huge difference yeah so we would have tons of pictures but them time hardly ever so I'll just show you what what I have guys and you'll definitely see how it looked from the outside um because i have pictures of those and yeah that would be it for this story time thank you so much for watching and i will see you in our next video bye, bye.